Hello! Uh, I am in no way a religious person, but something I do almost religiously is that I mend clothes. Uh, I think it's so important in these times that we have now. Oh, it, we're just mass, mass producing everything and and we just throw it away after a couple of uses or, or um, as soon as there's a little hole or they don't fit, um, we, we kind of just throw them away. And I don't like that. I, um, it's not, yeah, I, I don't like that at all. So I mend things. I mend my clothes. I, um, yeah. It's kind of an obsession almost for me that I do that. And I have learnt over the years that not everyone knows how to do that. So I thought I could show you. Um, this will be a series of films. So it's not uh, just this one. There are different ways of mending things and, and uh, things like that. So... Um, I thought I can just show you how I do it and that's not the only correct way of doing it you can do it however you want uh, but this is how I do it we are now in mid April 2020 and we are in the middle of a pandemic uh, half of the world is locked down because of the coronavirus and, and COVID-19 this was filmed in February and I do mention the coronavirus in the video uh, but I never knew that it would come to this um, so that it would go this far. I also have tried and exper I'm experimenting with my filming and with my lighting and things like that and as you see now I have quite good light on me because there are plenty of uh, lights around me that it's not that good of a light in this video and I apologize for that um, but I'm learning and also uh, where to keep my hands when sewing is not the easiest way to show what I'm doing show you what I'm doing uh, but this is the first of yeah we'll see how many of these uh, mending films I will make and as you hear now my voice is going quite sore so I just hope that it's not the coronavirus because uh, that kind of sits in the throat uh, but I hope I'll wake up with uh, not such a sore throat tomorrow um, yeah so this is it this is how to mend your clothes this is uh, a pair of un undies, undergarments. It's winter here in Sweden, so it's really, really cold. And this is um, wool, knitted wool, um, that is sold around here. And it's really good to have under your clothes to, um, to keep warm in winter time. But you see, as a lot of, of trousers, you see, there's a hole there. There are several small holes there. And there is a hole here. I don't know why that is there, but it but it is. And um, I thought that I could just show you how I do when I mend these. I can tell you later on how I do when I kind of gather my fabric for things. Uh, but for this, I happen to have a uh, quite a large piece of just straight from the uh, factory knit knitted wool and I th I am going to use this to mend these this is not a garment it's just a piece of fabric and around here you can at times find that in you know like f flea markets and thrift shops shops and you know secondhand shops and things like that if you can't find just the fabric you can find 
garments like these and even though they might not fit you it might be children's clothing it might be something else you can still buy them for quite a uh, cheap amount and then you can use the fabric from that this and this is the area I intend to mend and I'm going to to sew one big patch to the inside of this and it will be about this big and over here so I will just measure it and I also have to check the knit goes that way and that way so I will have to use the fabric this in the same direction it doesn't uh, fit in the crutch here but it, that doesn't matter so much this um, fabric is also a bit thicker which is not that bad actually since I use these trousers uh, when I ride when I ride horses so this is quite a big piece and now let's see it's from there to there and that will do I'll just cut a little nib there and it's from there to there so this is how big a patch I will be sewing on to this I've had these undies for ages I don't know for how long I've had them but at least 10 years probably closer to 20 I would guess there we have the patch it's not a perfect patch but it doesn't matter now what I'm going to do is try to spread this out on the inside like this exactly like this and it, at times it's a bit of a challenge I'm just turning them inside out so and do the same thing as I did earlier you see they're kind of fluffy on the inside I don't know what that's called in English so please teach me I hate it when it's there are English words that I don't know um, here we are. To start with, I just put the pin in and that will, <laughs> will mean that I will get it wrong because I will have uh, through too many layers and things like that, but I can fix that afterwards. This is just to get it onto the proper part of the trousers. Just slapping it on and I have now, these needles are now uh, poking all through the fabrics, all the layers of it, uh, as it is folded and I don't want them like that. But now I can take these and I can actually try to find my way in. Now, here I now hold exactly just the layers I want to fasten with that pin. And then I can be more careful. to pin it I am truly one for shortcuts when it comes to sewing truly but pinning it yes you do have to pin it because otherwise you can never get it straight and if you don't get it straight it will be uncomfortable and then you will not use it and you will throw them away anyway so I would say, yes, you do have to pin it. So, there we are. I have now pinned all of this. Oh, sorry, darling. Sorry, darling. You can't go there. Walk here. Come on here. 
and he's quite confused when I speak English to him. Prospero, come. Yeah. Could you fall that? Could you fall that? So that could you fall? Hey. Now I need to decide what thread to use. Um, this is wool, and kind of in my thought, I always want to use natural materials, but. The cotton thread that that I do have wool th wool thread wouldn't hold for uh, hold up for anything, not in this. Uh, and the cotton thread I have is also a bit weak. I could use that double, though. But I also could use a stronger synthetic thread. My darling, you will have to move over. You will have to move over. You'll have to move to my chair. So you sit in this chair, darling. Cotton thread it is, and using it double. You can, of course, do this on a machine, sewing machine. I don't do that because I'm not that fond of sewing machines. I have two old ones really really old ones they work decently enough but I prefer hand stitching it's just because that's how I do it now what stitch should you use it depends on what kind of fabric you have uh, if I had a stiff fabric who wasn't any that where there weren't any stretch in it I would just use I think you call it after stitches or back stitches, back stitches. That's it. Uh, that's what you call it. It's efterstring in Swedish. Um, but this is stretch, so I will use. Oh, I don't even know the word for this in English either. Uh, but it's just. It becomes a little dot on the on the main side, and then you have. It has to be able to move, you know. So this will probably be a bit difficult to see how I'm doing this. I'll just see what happens up here. I'll just have the lamp. I have made just a simple knot. There. And I just have to check it. So that's where my next pin is. I am just trying to pick up one or two threads. It's not that important when it's this kind of fabric, but very tiny. And then you make quite a long stitch next to it. This, the fact that this is um, in a, like crooked, it's not straight over like this. This is what makes it flexible. So there. Um, a couple of threads in the bottom and you pick it up there and now you can't see this very well let's see if I can hold it closer to the light um, and you will not be able to see these stitches either and even if I would have sewn this with a red thread which I, which I could have done because they are just undies. No one is going to see these. And what the fuck? There's no problem sewing with a coloured thread if you just put some attitude into it. And this I will be doing all the way around. took approximately an hour perhaps something like that now let's turn these over back the right side out because we now have the patch on the inside 
and here you now see the hole with a patch on the inside and what will we do with this now now i will have to tidy don't have this and also you'll have to fasten it so that it doesn't move too much so what i will do i will cut the ugly edges out of this you, here you can actually choose how much you want to cut you can cut can cut it almost all the way to the edges of the patch but i tend to think that i usually think that it's better to actually keep as much as possible and here we have that hole you see there i will take the worst parts of it out that would have been worn out very soon anyway and here's where you can see that it's not super super important that everything is totally straight because uh, we are now folding this and we kind of can shape this layer a bit uh, to match that layer so what are we doing now now let's see I'll just sit down and see to it that I don't sit on my cat. He thinks I do. And I do a bit. So here we have that hole. Let's just fold the edges in. So we'll just fold the edges. This is a bit easier with this, this kind of fabric that is so stretchy, you know. The stitches are more tricky, but this folding and things like that is easier with this stretchy fabric than it is with, with a less stretchy fabric. So, here we are. I will do the same with that hole eventually when I've finished it finish this one now I will have to uh, pin this flat to to the under uh, to this so I will do it like this I have done the fold there I'll just take the fold out and I will pin it down short but I think I'll start using it anyway and I will actually sew with the same kind of stitch as I did on the inside but it will be much much smaller and tighter now uh, because I still want it to move you know so see I do the same thing I do not need to take just one or two threads in the bottom in the patch now I can take like a real stitch in the patch but here is the tiniest uh, at the edge Well, I apparently have to walk my dog now, so I will just shut this off.
Here we are. Last bit of this then. Uh, let's just stitch the last piece of it. Wah. Much happier dog, isn't it? question also can come up, do you not want to put the patch on the outside? And I say, yeah, you can if you want to. Uh, it's more a matter of taste, actually. I prefer doing it this way. Um, don't know why. In what circumstances could I imagine putting it on the outside I don't know if I if it was more decorative I, th I guess because you can do this as imaginative as you want you know I know I had a pair of jeans I, I sewed on uh, patches that was in the shape of flowers and stars and things like that as I am sewing, sitting here I mean, at the end of February in 2020 the world is freaking out about the coronavirus and I am getting the sniffles I have a cold working on on me at the moment, which means every little cough, every little sniffle. Ah, it's a coronavirus. So, here we have one mended pair of underpants. You see the patch, it sits here, here's the patch and the holes are here. Uh, so this is how I do it. There was one tiny hole here as well, you saw that. I will mend that tomorrow after I use these. Uh, the patch now is much thicker than the, the original fabric and that doesn't matter that much. It's because it's a thicker version of this kind of uh, fabric. I have a few of these uh, and this in this fabric as well and I will have to mend them as well. So I, as you saw, I had quite a lot of that of this extra fabric. Uh, but this, well, these were the ones that were closest to me and the ones that I will be using tomorrow. So, um, if you think this is a good idea to watch me mend a lot of things, uh, just let me know and I will do more of it because that's completely possible. Bye.